Hello, everyone, and welcome to season six of the Choose You Calgary podcast. I'm your host, Montana, and I am so excited to welcome this week's guest. Here at the Choose You Calgary podcast, we answer your questions, bring on current students, and try to help you on your journey to learning more about the University of Calgary and how it could be the right fit for you. Megan is a fourth year student at the University of Calgary and she's in education. Megan, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan. I am in a four year Bachelor of Elementary Education program. Um, my specialization is early childhood education. So a lot of my courses in the last year have been only early childhood views. But there's also a five year concurrent program you can take uh, that gets you two degrees in one. I just chose the four year because it's more direct route. Nice. Awesome. So for anyone listening, can you please tell us where you're from and a little bit more about your background before coming to the University of Calgary? Yeah, so I'm from British Columbia, the Okanagan. So it's a small town called Summerland. Um, most people know the Kelowna area, so it's close to there. I went to school there, grew up there all my life, and I've just always loved working with kids, and I wanted to move to a bigger city, so that's why I chose Calgary and the elementary group. Gotcha. So is there anything about the University of Calgary opposed to anywhere else in the Alberta area that made it more special for you or unique? Yeah, I actually was um, part of an out-of-province flying program. So I was able, I was selected as one of 30 students to get flown down by the university um, as part of their recruitment. It was awesome because I was able to tour the campus, see what the student life would be like and learn a lot more about the program. So that majorly influenced my decision because I was already comfortable with the campus. For sure. Yeah, no, definitely. And for anyone out there listening, you can also tour the campus and book via appointment uh, online at the recruitment site. And if you're looking for more information there, feel free to DM us on Instagram to learn more about that. But that's definitely a really, really cool way to learn about uh, the university. So you choose UFC. Can you walk me through the transition from graduating high school to arriving at university? Like, how are you feeling? Like, kind of what were you thinking? Yeah, the biggest... Um, change for me was obviously moving out of home for the first time but also moving to a new province so Mm -hmm. I had only been out of British Columbia once before it was a huge transition but I found it was really nice to be in residence right away because I immediately met people right um you're placed with a roommate most likely so you have an automatic friend and someone to talk to and Mm -hmm. I met all of my friends that those first couple weeks And how great are they? They're awesome. I love them. Still friends with a lot of them. So a little bit more about residents. Can you tell us a bit more about that whole experience, like a day to day in your life? Yeah. So the first, well, the first day I got there, we unpacked our stuff and then there was immediately a floor meeting. So you have a a CA who, a community advisor, who's kind of in charge of your floor to just help you guide guide you through. And so we immediately had a meeting with them and just got to know everyone on our floor. Mm -hmm. And then from there on, it was just monthly meetings and events that you could get to know other people in the building. And it was awesome. It's residence is great because it's so close to campus. So the farthest you ever have to walk is really 10, 15 minutes. And there's also tunnels in the winter, which are awesome. They Mm -hmm. take, they only add on about five minutes to your walk and it saves you from the Calgary winters. Yes, definitely. So outside of residence, uh, and speaking of like amenities and things like that, obviously you sell the tunnels that you can use at the school, but what else, like what other amenities at the university outside of residence really drew you? Well, I would say like their athletic facilities are really great. Go, I didn't use them myself a ton, but when I did, they're really open and it was an awesome space to go to sporting events. That was a huge thing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that about it. Another great thing for education students is there's a separate library. It's called the Doucette Library. It's in Education Tower. And that was huge because it's just, it has all of the resources you would need for student teaching and gives you a quieter space. So that's where you'd probably study the most often then, would you yeah, say? That's yeah, that's where I would go to. You can still book study rooms or just be with fellow teachers in there. So it's awesome. Good, nice to know. Okay, so if someone were to come up to you and say, hey, like I wanna pursue the same academic path as you, what would your advice be? What would you tell them? Things like that. 
my advice would be in the first year, you kind of get to do a lot of electives and it's not so focused on the education courses, which is nice. You just Mm -hmm. get accustomed to university life choose electives and choose courses that interest you Mm -hmm. um, when you start because those aren't ones that are going to have a great influence on the degree later on, Mm -hmm. but you got to do them. So choose ones that interest you. And in year two starting, I would say get to know your profs. Most likely you'll have the same prof for at least two or three courses over your degree. Yeah, I have one prof. I've had three already. Um, And you start to build relationships. The class sizes get smaller and smaller as your degree goes on. Right. Um, And they're great. I've had profs write reference letters and, you know, sit down with me for coffee or over Zoom and just give advice. So definitely uh, speak out and get to know your profs. For sure. Yeah. So... So you said like in your second and third year is definitely more education based. You're really getting to know the content of it. And I know right now you're doing a practicum. Mm -hmm. So when does that start coming into play and when do you start planning for it and things like that within your degree? So the nice thing is it's flexible. So you you can meet with an academic advisor. One of the great things is if you choose to, you can have the same academic advisor all the way through. So I actually met one on the fly-in in my grade 12 year, mm-hmm. and she stuck with me. She's still my advisor. I still am in contact with her. So she just helped me plan it out. So you can do all your education courses um, right away if you, if you would like. Most people, what I did is... I waited. So I got all of my electives, all of my, you know, English courses, history courses out of the way first year and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the way it works is in my second year, first semester, you just have a two week observation field experience. So you just a week in a high school, a week in an elementary. Okay. And you just observe. Right. um, For two weeks. Second one is four weeks and you start teaching a little bit. I ended up doing that one online, actually, right. which was a really interesting experience. And then in field three and four in your final year is when you're most likely with the same classroom teacher, both field experience for the whole year. And you, by the end, you're teaching 100%. Right. So it's six weeks and then eight weeks again in your second semester. And it's awesome because you get full teaching experience before you even graduate. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also is a great way to get in with schools. Before, for sure your network before applying yeah exactly. yeah you can really yeah. build your network that mm-hmm. way that's a really cool part of it is there any other ways that you're kind of able to build that network I know you said talk to your profs early on but any like students in the same faculty as you yeah so I have been working with um one friend of mine since first day of second second year and we've been in every class together since mm-hmm. then because she's early childhood too right so they they do split you into your um, specializations, which is nice. So you really get to know those people. The other thing that is a great, a great resource is the ESA. So it's the Education Students Association. Okay. I made the mistake of only joining this year. Oh. (laughs) Join your first year. Don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. (laughs) Join your first year. It's $20 a year. Okay. You basically get, they send you sign up list for workshops and different programs that you can then actually put into your academic folder and put those on your resumes. Nice. And the Alberta Teachers Association, which when you graduate, you'll have to um, apply to be part of that in order to teach in Alberta. Okay. You get a student membership with them through the ESA. Okay. So you already have an in. Right. um, Right away. Right. So for example, in my first week of field experience coming up here, there's the uh, teachers conference for all of all teachers in Alberta because I'm part of the um, education students association and have a student ATA membership I get to go to that conference and okay. do all the same workshops that nice. other teachers do so I can build up my portfolio that way wow cool no I've never heard of that that's really interesting yeah uh, so as we said like that's one way that you can really build your network shifting more so to just making friends and things like that, especially for incoming students. I know we've talked about residents being a big way that you've met a lot of your friends, but even whether you're in residence or not, how did you like even make friends regardless? Like what, like, especially if, whether you're extroverted or introverted, how do you think future students should try to go about that? I think 
On one of the best ways sometimes I found is playing dumb in classes. Okay. A little bit. <laughs> like, it sounds weird, but hear me out. Making friends in general when you go somewhere new can be hard. How do you even make friends in university outside of your classroom or even faculty? Click the link in our description to the blog post about making friends outside of your faculty to learn more and find other blog posts from other students, past alumni, and more. I came from a small town. I never had to meet people. So I am extroverted now, but I didn't mm -hmm. used to be. And one of the things I would do is in lecture halls, I would just ask someone beside me or in front of me. I didn't catch that. Can you, what, oh, is, what did the prof say? Or sneaky. just to get a little in because yeah. a lot of, especially in education, mm -hmm. it's all group work. All yeah. of it. Oh, okay. Good so to know. you got to meet people. You have no choice. Right. So yeah, start early. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a few um, friends I have just from random elective classes that I just sat beside or made small talk with, and we're still in touch. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, you just kind of got to be creative about it. Creative. Yeah. yeah. Use a little <laughs> icebreakers. I like yeah. it. I like it. That's perfect. Uh, okay. So you're making friends. All the good stuff. Uh, is there any course in that first year or professor that kind of set the tone, especially early on, for like the workload that would be ahead or what, like what was the adjustment like in that sense from high school to university work and how did you deal with the transition? Um, I think the biggest shock was that it was mostly exams um, okay. instead of you know, handing in papers and stuff like that. Like there, I did have a few classes, like obviously English and history classes. Those were very paper heavy and assignment heavy. Mm -hmm. um, but a, a lot of them, you would just go in and it would be, Kate, you have two midterms and a final exam. Right. That's your grade. Right. So the biggest adjustment was learning how to take notes for a university course versus high school. So just changing how, how you study, because it's a lot more it's a lot more intense of a schedule. Um, before you, before you know it, you have a midterm, and then suddenly you blink and the class is over. And right. so you just have to be more intentional with your studying. Right. Um, but I don't think it was a huge, a huge change. Once you get through the first semester, it's pretty, pretty good. After that, you get pretty used to it. Right. Yeah. For sure. I completely agree. So. Is there a specific course or professor that really stuck with you after the class had ended? Uh, yeah, so I have a few right now, from, mm -hmm. just from this year, but one from my first field experience when it was just observation. So we didn't have to teach it all. Is that in second That's year? in second okay. year, yeah, sorry. So it's um, first semester, second year. And it was just, it was a theory-based course that then went into two weeks of observation. And she was just very supportive. Okay. And I remember um, the second semester after I wasn't in her class anymore, I, I just ran into her on campus and she remembered me out of oh, the class, cool. stopped me. We, we chatted for a while and, and we still are in contact sometimes. And she's just super supportive and an awesome leader. She used to be a school principal and a teacher lots of the education profs are which mm -hmm. is really nice because they bring um really valuable insight for sure into our classes yeah yeah so we were just talking about how she was very supportive for you can you walk me through uh the support system that you built in calgary because as you said this is kind of your first time you yeah. know move, this is your first time obviously out of province and yeah. that whole experience yeah so i found my main friends and um, so that's definitely my main support system for sure. I think then the next level up would be the next layer is going to be the people in your classes right. that you have multiple classes with, right? Because those are the ones that you can turn to when you're struggling with an assignment and you get to know each other real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, and you say like, I don't know what's going on right. and you're just there to support each other. Um, and then from there, I would say the professors, especially in the education department, just because it is such uh, small class sizes, 
we are a smaller department compared to others. Mm -hmm. So you get to form those relationships and I'm never scared to reach out to a professor and or to email and I never have to worry. I have one another professor who was emailing me over the Christmas break and mm -hmm. telling me about his family and his grandkids and and it's just really special some of the bonds you can you can come up with. So yeah, I would say friend find your main friend group, friends from classes, and then professors. That's a really good way to look at it for sure. Thank you. Um, another thing that I really want to know a bit more about is just on a broader scale, Calgary in general. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like, did you uh, like have you visited Calgary but even before you came to the campus, or and like when you did, what was different from BC? Obviously, the weather, but you know, like other than that, like what really like surprised you the most? Yeah, so I had been to Alberta once before, the year before my first year. Um, sorry, a year before the fly-in. So only one time we did a road trip to Edmonton. We drove through Calgary, didn't really see it. Um, and then on the fly-in. On the fly-in, we really focused on campus. the university and mm -hmm. campus. So we didn't, I didn't really get to explore. Uh, the transit system was a shock to me. Oh. Because there's no we we just got a bus where I'm from. Oh, so, <laughs> so transit was a whole like trains was just like mind blowing, mm -hmm. um, and it was super daunting at first. Mm -hmm. And then you ride it once and you realize there's it's really simple. Yeah, it's there's one like train goes lines. one way. Yeah, one train it's one way, one train the other. Not as bad as it looks. Yeah, super simple. And I would say the atmosphere was okay. I absolutely loved it. I don't see myself leaving Calgary after I graduate um, or anytime soon. It's just, it's a very positive atmosphere and mm -hmm. a lot of friendly people. And there's a lot of um, kind of hidden gems of little, little neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, Kensington is one that I really recommend. I love it. And Inglewood. Yes. They just have awesome little coffee shops to study. Um, there's a boardroom cafe, stuff like that. Just Really, you can be close to the city, and then you can also find those small town moments right. within it. So that's what I appreciate about it. Yeah, you can find community even in bigger cities. Yeah, for exactly. Sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that's a good lesson uh, to anyone that's looking to come to the University of Calgary, is no matter if you've never been to Calgary before, or if you come from a small community, Calgary can still be the right fit for you. And Megan is an example of, of that. So thank you again, Megan, for being our guest on this week's episode, and for sharing your experience experience at the University of Calgary. Here at the University of Calgary, we look forward to engaging with prospective students and please feel free to reach out to us via our Instagram, Facebook, and a website, all linked below in the description. Until next time, this has been the Choose You Calgary podcast. Bye for now.